Hey guys, so this is going to be a build overview and kind of guide about the Transcendence Armor and Resistance Stacker. I will go over the build overview, what we're doing with the build, and then we'll go over all the items and the gear and on the, you know, the gems and the usual stuff like that. And after that, we'll cover some possible upgrades to the build that I would want to do because it is by, uh, by no means uh, finished. The items, while they are very nice items, uh, they can be upgraded and I will be uh, crafting these upgrades, uh, I guess, sometime this week or next week, and we'll see. I'll make some separate videos on how I made them. But first of all, let's go over the build. So, the basic concept of the build is we are trying to get a lot of armor, and we're doing this by getting a lot of cold resistance, which we're then converting into evasion with the Grasping Mail. We're stacking intelligence, which we're also converting into evasion with the Shaper's Touch and the Energy Shield and Evasion Mastery. Then we're converting all of that evasion rating into armor with Iron Reflexes, which then gets scaled by our Determination, Auras, and a uh, Flask and stuff like that. Then we're taking all of that uh, armor and damage reduction and applying it to our elemental damage uh, taken from hits with the Transcendence Keystone. And we end up being extremely tanky to any kind of hit damage and stuff like that. So usually on uh, Armor Stacker, see most of the Armor Stackers are going to be using the Doriani's Prototype. Now Doriani's Prototype is a very good option for armor uh, armor armor stacker mainly because it provides insane amount of damage due to the negative uh, lightning resistance we can apply to our uh, nearby enemies however this does have its uh, downfalls shortcomings you could say uh, mainly being lightning degen is a big problem for this build and you will die to these mana mana siphoner mobs and any other kind of lightning degen like shaper beams or the balls and all, all these kind of things are pretty much going to kill you and on top of that the ehp is not the best you have about 90 uh 90k or so ehp overall a little bit more on fire because of the ruby flask and so let's just say that this build is basically the same concept as the armor stacker, but we are also stacking resistance. So we have this chest here. Uh, we have the increased global defenses. First of all, this is giving us quite a bit more armor evasion and energy shield. And then we have this line in here at the bottom. It says evasion rating is increased by overcapped cold resistance. So we are getting increased evasion from our cold resistance. And let's just put this flask on too real quick. So you can see we have 648 cold resistance. So you can see that is quite a bit of uh, increased evasion. When we use our Grace Aura, we are at 4.6 million armor. So that translates into quite a lot of damage. Um, actually, it is not as much damage as using the Doriani's prototype. Doriani's prototype is a little bit more. But this build has pretty much the same damage... A little bit less damage, but insane uh, survivability. We can tank pretty much anything in the game. And you don't have to worry about these mana siphoners anymore. They're not a problem. Like, um, yeah. So, overall, this uh, Transcendence res uh, Resistance stacking version is what I would say is the ultimate endgame armor stacker uh, build. Uh, you pretty much are immortal in this build to pretty much anything in the game nothing can really kill you and it is overall the best version i would say now this version is pretty expensive if you would if you think that the regular armor stacker with orionis prototype uh, is expensive and it can get pretty expensive getting you know double, double corrupted items and a lot of other things well this build is about two to three times more expensive than the most expensive orionis prototype um, armor stacker so i just want to throw that out there just kind of uh, give you a picture of what uh, type of build this is so overall that is the build overview we are stacking resistances uh, cold resistance mainly and we are also stacking armor and evasion and aura effect all right so let's go over some of the differences first of the regular version so this is the pob 
Um, let's first look at the POB for the regular armor, armor stacker. You can see the hit DPS is about 95 million. Now we look at, I want, I want you guys to look at these numbers here, our uh, physical max hit 47k, fire max hit 103. Well, this is because of the ruby flask with the increased effect, you can see without it. Okay, well, we can't really take that out. But anyways, it would be the same as our cold max hit. And the lightning max hit, pretty much the same as our physical because of Doriani's prototype. All right, now let's take a look at the transcendence version. We are at 75 million DPS. Now this is with everything ticked, you know, with fall haste and all that kind of stuff. But I would like to mention that this is not running Berserk, whereas the Doriani's version does have Berserk in the config. So if we take Berserk off, we can see that it actually is less damage than the uh, Transcendence version. But anyways, let's look at our EHP. Now the Fizz Max hit a little bit low, and that's because we have not really converted all of our physical damage into elemental yet. We'll get into that a little bit later. Uh, in short, this number here, once you once build is actually converting everything all of your fizz damage into elemental damage. This number is going to be the same as some of these numbers here. Fire max hit 44k of uh, well, 446k. Now this is with molten shell up. And if we take molten shell off, this uh this number should uh drop down. Yeah, so without molten shell 56k on the fizz and about 260k on the fire a little bit more on cold because of the sapphire flask we're using but anyways with molten shell these are the numbers without it it's like this all right armor 4.7 it shows 4.7 in plb but 4.6 in game i'm not really sure what's going on there but anyways and you can see we have 628 cold resistance so quite a lot of more defense and with these kind of stats no um damage hit damage is going to kill you it's pretty much impossible unless it's a big fizz hit and that's because yeah like i said before we haven't converted all of our physical damage into elemental all right now i think it's about time we go over the transcendence what is transcendence so transcendence is a keystone you get from one of these militant face that has the um by the high templar um marxist mark mark Marxist, can't really pronounce this. Anyways, call it Marxist. He gives us this transcendence keystone. So it says armor applies to fire, cold, and lightning damage taken from hits instead of physical. And uh, basically, that means that all of your armor uh, is not going to apply to physical damage reduction, it's going to apply to elemental. And then, yeah, one thing to note is that this, re this reduction you get from this keystone happens after the regular elemental uh, resistance. So you can see we have 76 fire res. So this is reducing the damage of a hit by 76%. And then after that damage gets reduced, then our armor value, which is probably gonna be 90% damage reduction gets applied. So that's why we are so tanky to uh, elemental damage is because we have two, uh, we're getting two times the damage reduction. Now, Transcendence does come with some downfalls, and that is mainly the your physical damage reduction is going to be zero. So that means any kind of fizz hit will one-shot you, unless you do a physical to elemental conversion. And we're doing that with uh, a couple of things here. Uh, we can go over some of these, the ways we're converting it, mainly just through items. You know, Watcher's Eye, we have the Taste of Hate. We have a uh, Corruption on our Aegis Aurora. We have some uh, helmet mods. We'll go get into that when we go over the gear. We have the uh, craft on the grasping mail. And there's an armor and energy shield mastery over here that gives us 10% of physical damage taken from hits as chaos. So ideally you want to convert all of your physical damage into elemental. But if you can't do that for some reason, you can actually also do a mix of physical to elemental conversion and then get flat physical damage reduction and you can get that with uh, let's say endurance charges so if we have endurance charges uh, you get a little bit of flat physical damage reduction you can then also opt in to take guardian and this will give us flat physical damage reduction 
and that'll sort of help with the physical hits. You can see our EHP did jump up quite a bit. So you can do a mix of both uh, if you want, if it's a little bit hard to actually convert all of your fizz to elemental, and it is very hard. You will need some very expensive items and double corruptions to actually achieve 100%. So you can actually still play this build without Transcendence. Let's say you, you're just tired of Dorianis, you want to play Armor Sacker, but you hate Dorianis, hate those Mana Siphoners, it's a pain in the ass, it's very stressful. Well, good news is you can actually do that. You can play the build, the same uh, build, you just build it like a normal Armor Stacker, but you just don't play with Transcendence, basically, and you don't bother with converting your Fist to Elemental. So you still will have very good damage, very good HP, and stuff like that just won't be able to probably won't be able to tank a lot of the thing uh uber boss you know slams all that kind of stuff like that so there is that uh if just wanted to throw that out there if you do want to try this out but you don't want to go through all the trouble and hassle of converting your fizz to elemental and stuff like that the build is still playable uh without having to do all of this okay let's go over the gear so let's start off with our sword so this sword i made specifically for this build and it, everything's in the crucible tree basically we need point blank point blank is a must uh i guess you could actually go path down this way pick up point blank then you would be missing out on your stun reduction and this is actually not that big of a deal uh well yeah, i guess you will lose some mana reservation here but not really the end of the world you can actually get stun immunity on a flask Instead of the increased armor or, you know, increased elemental resistances, you can swap one of these out. Uh, not the end of the world, because these point-blank uh, swords are pretty pricey. Alright, and then I have 60 strength, and you gain no inherent bonuses from strength. Well, that's fine, because strength is giving us, like, such a tiny amount of attack damage that it doesn't even really matter. But the plus 60 strength is giving me a lot of energy shield with the Shaper's Touch. So I guess it is nice, not, I, I guess not really the best in the world, right? But, you know, when crafting this sword, it's like, th there is hardly any of these online even. It's a mutate-only mod, extremely rare, and you really don't want to mess around with this tree, you know? Um, once you have it, you're, <laughs> if you lose this, then, yeah, good, say goodbye to like 30 to 100 divines just for this, you know, this mod. All right, for the last mod, we have getting a Frenzy Charge when you hit your marked enemy. So getting Frenzies, I, I really like having Frenzy Charges, and um, I want to get them in the build in some way or the other. And I managed to combine the Sword, the Point Blank, with the Frenzy. So I was pretty happy with that. All right, so let's go over the Helmet. Helmet is a regular hub Hubris Circlet. You see we have a fractured 10% of physical damage taken from hits as fire damage. This is where we're getting some of our elemental, uh, physical to elemental conversion. You see we have 10% on the fracture. And then we have another 8% on the implicit from the Searing Exarch. Or I think it's Eater of the Worlds actually. Check real quick. Uh, yeah, Eater of Worlds. So we get 8% of physical damage taken from hits as chaos damage. All right, and the, I guess the other implicit Searing Exarch doesn't really matter. It's nothing really that good for the build. But after that, just your generic helmet with a lot of energy shields, some res cold resistance. You can either go for cold resistance or intelligence. Either one is good. Intelligence probably is going to give you more damage, I think. Um, but anyways, anyways, yeah, cold resistance or intelligence. And then we have a crafted AoE gem. I did try to... Uh, Ashling this a couple of times and failed and had to recraft and I ended up spending way too much money on this helmet so I decided just to stick with this and do the craft and Mainly the reason is because it's very low item level and I do want to actually recraft it I have uh, some bases prepared over here You can see waiting to be fractured and I'll probably make a video about crafting this helmet later on when we get into crafting these higher level bases Okay, so Grasping Mail, I did make a video about how to cra how I crafted this, so you can go check that out if you're interested. But this is basically the core part of the build. This chest is pretty much needed to start playing this version of the build. We get it, we're getting the increased global defenses, and then we're getting the our evasion ratings increased by overcap cold resistance. Now there is a fire, so your armor is increased by your overcap fire resistance. And I guess it is an okay mod, but that mod is in, uh, is not really all that great. 
honestly. Uh, you know, increases to armor are half as good as increases to evasion rating on armor stacker. So uh, you generally don't really want to get that fire mod. But I mean, if the, these chests are so rare that if, you know, that's the only one that's on the market, then I guess you could do that and stack fire resistance instead of cold. But not really ideal. Ideally, you do want to be doing the cold resistance, and that's because we're using purity of ice too. We're not using purity of fire. Definitely go for the overcap cold resistance if you're going to be buying one of these chests. So uh, let's see. Ring. This ring is not really all that good, I'm gonna say. So I did the suffixes with the essences, and then I just did a lock suffix and reforge defense. I guess I could have done reforge lightning to try to get the lightning damage to attacks, but well, whichever one is. And I did get some nice energy shield on there. So I decided to keep it right now. Um, I have another base that uh, I will be recrafting, and I did spend quite a lot of money on this one too. So, and I, you know, this base really isn't all that good. It's only got the grace aura effect and some mana increase. Um, so, we will be recrafting the ring. Here is the ring that we'll be using. Gotta fix up the implicits. We got the grace aura effect, and we also have increased evasion rating, which is extremely nice. So I decided just to stop crafting this ring once I hit the intelligence and all attributes and some good cold resistance. You can see this is a tier 1 all attributes, tier 1 uh, essence, and a tier 3 cold resistance. And then yeah, tier 1 energy shield and all that kind of nice stuff, right? And since crafting these rings are pain in the ass and finding bases are uh, very annoying, I decided just to buy the Calandra's Touch to mirror my, my own ring. Alright, Shaper's Touch. Uh, this is pretty much the same as the regular armor stacker, but these gloves give us quite a lot of good stats. Uh, you can go look at the item on trade or in the PLB if you want, if you're interested. Okay, so for the shield, we are using Aegis Aurora, and there's a pretty important corruption that we need on our shield. And we need uh, any kind of physical damage taken from hits taken as fire damage. And usually this actually rolls 8%, you can see here. But with this Crucible node, the 50% increased Implicit, Modifier, Magnitudes, this 8% turns into a 12%. So that's what, where I'm kind of saying is this build is annoying, is because you pretty much have to make, you know, Crucible crafting is already annoying and very tedious. But on top of all of that, you need a Corrupted item. You know, you need a Corrupted Aegis Aurora with this Implicit, and then you have to also get the Crucible Tree. And mine is actually pretty nice. We got the Energy Shield. We got some Cold Resistance, which we need, you know, very big damage increase. Uh, this is kind of a dead mod. But then I also managed to add on a Grace Aura Effect mod on my shield as well. So, and ideally, we're going to want a double physical taken as Corruption on the shield. And, uh, yeah, so... I, I've probably double corrupted about 50 Aegis Auroras the past couple of days, and this so far is the best one I have. So when I when I said this build is annoying to, to make, and that's mainly with these, you know, higher end corruptions and stuff that you need to do. Alright, for the boots, we are using March of the Legion with a plus two corruption. I still have to buy a plus four or a plus two plus one, uh, something I need to do. And that's going to be it for the gear. All right, let's quickly go over some of these gem links. Well, first of all, we have our lightning strike. We've got the anomalous lightning strike for the extra projectile. I don't know, for the extra pierce. We've got a damage on full life. Ancestral call. Uh, elemental damage with attacks. Awaken multi-strike. And awaken lightning penetration. Actually, everything's awakened. Gems, but anyways. All right, and then for our helmet links, this is one of our aura links here. We've got a divergent purity of elements, so we're getting some more um, elemental penetration. We have discipline, divergent vitality, and purity of ice. And our second aura setup here is going to be an anomalous wrath with enlighten, and divergent determination, and a haste. I decided to buy a divergent vol haste for the increased projectile speed, which is pretty nice. All right, and in the boots, we have our uh, Divine Blessing setup. We're getting Divine Blessing from the uh, March of the Legion boots. So we have our Grace in here, then we have an Empower, and we have Divergent Inspiration. 
Uh, and then we have our Smite in here. Smite giving us quite a lot of damage on the build just from the buff. You get the attack and cast speed and the flat added lightning damage. All right, and let's see. We have uh, in the shield, we have Precision, Anomalous Defiance Banner, and the Phantasmal Ancestral Protector. Just some, you know, generic items here. And the sword, we have a Sniper's Mark, Mark on Hit with uh, Flame Dash. Well, actually, I'm only using Flame Dash for bossing. Uh, in general mapping, general gameplay, I'll be using the Phantasmal Leap Slam. Now, if you want to fit in Molten Shell, like I have in the POB, is you're going to be taking out the Mark on Hit and putting your Molten Shell in here. All right, so... Um, Honestly, don't even really need Mark on hit because you're re realistically you're only going to be using this on uber bosses and um, you're never going to have to use this in maps or any of that kind of stuff. So, uh, and at the same time, you don't even really need Molten Shell. You only need Molten Shell if you're going to be trying to take, you know, trying to tank some uber boss uh, explosion or meteor or some crazy shit like that. So, um, yeah, up to you guys what you want to use. I like to use Mark on hit. And if I'm doing some limit testing, I'll, of course, put Molten Shell in. Okay, let's go over some of the flasks, because the flasks have changed since the last build. So we have our Basalt Flask with increased evasion. And then we have a Silver Flask uh, with the increased armor. You can get the, you want the increased evasion and increased armor somewhere, somewhere in the build on one of the flasks. All right, and then for the... Um, Stibonite Flask, I decided to get the additional elemental resistances as I was actually pretty low on resistance and you can see without it, I actually do drop below 76. So, um, it is a little bit sad. I, if I can get some better clusters and stuff like that, I can actually drop this and go for the attack speed, which is a little bit more damage and probably make the build feel a little bit better. But then again, getting this additional elemental resistance is very nice because we're getting more evasion rating from our cold resistance. All right, last flask. Uh, when I'm doing bossing, I'll put in a jade flask for the uh, increased evasion. When I'm doing mapping, let's put in the quicksilver. And we are pretty fast. You can see um, definitely um, very nice movement speed. All right, so that's the flasks. And then for the last flask, uh, we are using Taste of Hate because of the physical damage taken from hits as cold damage. So this is another one of the uh, items we're using to convert our physical damage into elemental. All right, and if I guess if you were, if you're not doing the transcendence version, you can go for a, either a bottled faith or a dying sun for the extra projectiles. All right, so that's gonna be it for the gear and gems. Let's quickly go over the pantheons real quick before I forget them. Uh, this build is, the main weakness of this build is going to be damage over time. And I say weakness, it's not really weak to damage over time. Pretty much, it's probably stronger than most builds against any kind of damage over time. But, you know, degens from uber bosses and stuff like that can be annoying. So, uh, you know, there is some stuff you can do for, um, you know, extra damage reduction, increased physical damage reduction, stuff like that might be nice, but... I think the reduced damage over time overall is a little bit better. Um, it makes the build feel a little bit nicer when you're, you know, running over burning ground and all these kind of things like that. All right, and for the minor pantheon, I am still using the bleed immunity. Um, I could te technically, you know, drop this armor suffix because you know it's not not really all that impactful. I guess it is some nice damage, but it can be dropped to get bleed immunity and then I could go for another one. Not really sure what I would do. Maybe the additional physical damage reduction or the um, burning ground probably is probably one of these, the burning ground, or I think I would take the physical damage reduction. Yeah, there isn't really that many good things. We are, cause we are elemental, uh, immune to elemental ailments with the purity of elements. Okay, so that is the Pantheons. Let's go over the tree real quick. Oh, and if you did notice, we're not even running Tempest Shield on this build anymore. So running Aegis Aurora, we're not even using Tempest Shield. And that's because we have so much elemental damage mitigation that we don't even need block in the build anymore. You see, we are at 41% um, attack block. And not even going for glancing blows, you know. Um, this build is tanky enough that you don't even need Tempest Shield. You don't need block. 
Transcendence it has you covered for any kind of hit damage, basically. Okay, so let's go over, first of all, one of the bigger changes here. This is the Timeless Jewel. We're usually, before, um, on the normal armor stacker, we're using the Brutal Restraint to get the increased aura effect and some dexterity and all the kind of nice stuff. But for this build, we need a Militant Faith. So what we have here is um, increased effect of non-curse auras for 10 devotion. Right now, I am at... 170 devotion so that's another 17 percent increased aura effect not as much as the best brutal restraint you can get but um yeah still very nice and we also have reduced mana cost of skills for 10 devotion you can get increased elemental resistances for 10 devotion that will give you uh, quite a bit more i actually do have one here somewhere uh if i the thing is i wanted to run an empower over here so if i if I didn't have this reduced mana cost of skills here, I would have to be running the anomalous increased duration, right? So I would have to be running that in here and I wouldn't be able to slot the empower in. So overall, I think getting this uh, reduced mana cost on the jewel um, and slotting in the empower is a little bit better for damage. And then we're coming down here and we're getting this unnatural instinct. Uh, this is one of the places that we need to get Corrupted Blood Immunity. This also does give us quite a lot of devotion, about 80 devotion. So we're getting quite a lot of aura effect. You know, we're getting some a lot of move speed, which is nice. We're getting some projectile damage, which is nice for uh, lightning strike. You know, a little bit of fizz damage doesn't really matter. Got some chance to block, which is nice. And some more block chance. And we're getting some decks, you know, and we're getting some increased skill effect duration, and we're getting some reduced skill effect duration. Okay, so that is the Timeless Jewel and these jewels here. Aside from that, what we're doing is pretty much the same as the Armor Stacker. We're going for Iron Reflexes, Unwavering Stance, we're getting the jewels, we're getting the introspections. Now, these small clusters, what you're going to want on these is... Um, you're going to want cold resistance and all elemental resistances or cold resistance intelligence. So though either one of those, and the reason we want intelligence is because intelligence is giving us increased evasion rating. It's also giving us uh, increased energy shield and is, gen and is yeah, a really nice stat to have. It's also giving you accuracy. Um, so having a lot of intelligence is very nice. And we're also getting increased evasion per five intelligence from this keystone here. So overall intelligence is gonna be one of the biggest damage increases. I think even more than getting more cold resistance. In the end, intelligence does pull uh, a little bit more damage and does give you more uh, energy shield and stuff like that. So I think finding the right balance of the cold resistance and the intelligence is something you can kind of tweak around. Anyway, so either one of those and you will you will need quite a few of these 35% increased effect introspection large uh, small clusters. So I've got one, two, three, uh, failed fracture, uh, four, and I'm going to buy one more, I think. And once I get one more, actually, yeah, we can get into that in a little bit, kind of getting ahead of myself. But yeah, so we're getting elemental overload, two, we're getting zealot's oath, getting the aura. And this cluster here, this area, very important. We get the armor and energy shield here, get some elemental resistance, armor and energy shield, and then this keystone, 10% of physical damage from hits, taking us chaos damage. This is one, this is the only one you can get on the tree, I think, where you get some physical to elemental, or in this case, chaos conversion. All right, after that, uh, pretty much kind of uh, self explanatory, I think. Let's go over the Watcher's Eye real quick. It's a very special Watcher's Eye that I kind of sniped for about 15 Divines. Uh, very underpriced in my opinion. But this has 10% of physical damage taken from hits as cold with Purity of Ice. And then 10% of Fizz taken as Lightning while affected by Purity of Elements. So we're getting a total of 24% physical taken as Elemental from this jewel. And then it also has a... Damage penetrates 14% of lightning resistance while affected by wrath, which is a very big damage increase. Now, and I did have to divine this. I spent about 25 or 26, 27 divines trying to get the perfect physical, you know, fizz conversion. So that was very annoying. But yeah, that is the Watcher's Eye. 
All right, so that is going to be it for like the tree, the gear, skills, stuff like that. And let's go into future upgrades. What am I what what do I want? And first of all is I want to get some sort of uh, energy shield leech. So let's go look at the POB real quick. Okay, so in the POB, what I want to do is I want to get another 35% increased effect small cluster so I can drop this node and pick up Ghost Reaver. So I already have about 700 ES regen, so I don't really even care about ES recharge anymore at this point. Um, but I would rather get some energy shield leech. And where are we going to get the leech? Well, I am going to go buy this alternate quality on the damage on full life, the anomalous damage on full life. And this is going to give us attack damage leeched as life. So we get this. And then we'll convert that life leech into energy shield leech. So we'll have about a thousand ES on hit. Uh, I mean, uh, ES Leech. So that's going to be very nice. I think, I guess we'll have to kind of see how it feels. If it's not all that great, well then maybe I'll just opt in here and get some more Energy Shields. We go up to 6k Energy Shield. Uh, so that could be nice. And after that, what we want is a double corrupt, uh, double Fizz taken from Hits as Elemental Damage. Uh, corruption on the Shield. This is going to be another very long project to do. I'm still, um, you know corrupting these every day, trying to get the uh, double fizz taken as elemental. Alright, and then I want to recraft my helmet onto a higher eye level base, and I want to get a better uh, roll on the cold resistance and energy shield. I do want to recraft my ring, like I said, I want to have a grace. Uh, I want the grace aura effect, I want the increased evasion, and I want a determination or discipline increase aura effect on it so that'll be kind of fun and after that you know a double corrupted pair of boots double a nice double corruption on the gloves and i think that'll be it for the upgrades for this build all right guys but that's going to be it for this video thanks for watching uh, and i'll see you next time